Hey, um, I had no intention of recording a video today, but then I've just seen some of the news from Adobe and particularly their sneak peeks. And I th it's just blown my mind. I think it's the things that are coming down the line, the fact they put all this effort into AI over how many years, building up to these points with Firefly and all the different integrations. And then they've just shown what they're adding um, to allow you to do generative fill in videos and then having Posable characters, much like a control net in Stable Diffusion, to be able to generate images based on a character that you pose in 3D. And I think it's it's game changing, and it's going to uh, impact animation in the very near future. So um, I thought I'd quickly share the news, take you through it, and just give you some of my own thoughts on where this is all heading, and how we will soon be able to make use of these tools to bring your creativity to life through different animation and image generation tools using AI and hopefully still some classic digital animation techniques. Here we go. So first of all they showed us a still image of a woman and they draw a little mask around some of the runners in the background. Press generate and it removes them from the clip and it turns out it wasn't a still image it was actually a video clip and it seamlessly removed them drawing them out for each frame in the scene and it does a, what looks like a perfect job. Then there's this clip of a guy looking cool walking down some stairs, but he hasn't got a tie. So they stop the video and they draw a little mask around the area they want to use generative fill on. And then press generate and it gives them a few options just like it does in Photoshop. Um, and then you can select a white tie or the stripy one and they press play and it's seamlessly matching his movement. It even moves through some shadows and the lighting is perfect. And then there's this coffee cup clip where there's a heart shape in the top of the coffee, they do a selection, swap out for another image, press play, and again, it works perfectly, um, and it even moves with the movement of the top of the coffee as it floats around in the cup, which is just crazy. Now, all of that looks really, really impressive, and I can already see how in video editing and compositing, that would be really useful, being able to swap out logos on film clips where you're not happy, and improve the scenes, change the backgrounds, and things like that. So yeah, really, really cool, um, and, not all that surprising. We've seen that generative fill with AI has been really popular in Photoshop um, and other AI tools. So it was, you know, I think everyone probably expected it to be applied to video eventually. Um, so yeah, and it looks like it's a really smart um, integration of that tool. I think what's really interesting is those three examples. So the tie, the coffee cup, and that scene behind the woman with the runners removed. They're all kind of static elements that are morphing in the scene rather than being animated clips themselves. So it's not showing an example where an animated character is being generated by the AI that you can then drop into the scene. Perhaps you can do that, they just haven't shown it off yet. Um, but at the moment it looks more like compositing um, effects where you do some scene replacement rather than actual animation generation. But it would be really cool and I'm keen to be able to try that out and see what happens. So, you know, similar to how in Photoshop, you could start with a blank canvas and start selecting areas and using generative fill to slowly build up a scene. Could you do that um, with this approach with video and create um, fully animated things or does it need to be applied to original video footage? Either way, it's very cool and I'm sure there's potential perhaps to be able to swap out someone's face with a robot's face, give them a robot body, gruesome arms, all sorts of weird stuff, um, but uh, yeah. Very cool, very exciting. They also showed off Project Posable, which again looks really cool and I can see how as this develops could be really useful in animation. Um, essentially it looks like a nice polished, easy to use version of a control net in Stable Diffusion, where you can use a rig and different components to be able to guide the position of a character in a generated image or even in an animation. And it looks like Adobe have taken their own approach to this, where you can pose a 3D character, in this example, sitting them down on a seat, arranging the camera how you want it to be viewed and then running a generative fill prompt and it creates a still image using the new Firefly 2. Um, Firefly 2, which has just been released, is producing some really good quality images and certainly catching up with mid-journey, potentially beating it in some instances. So yeah, being able to pose a character is really cool and uh, opens up some great examples for still image generation. Another thing they showed was, again, something that you can do in ControlNet and Stable Diffusion, which is to use an image reference or even a video reference with ControlNet and take a position from that. And that will pose the rig in the position matching that reference image. And Adobe are doing that here and it looks like it works really well. So again, I can see how this will be massively useful and potentially applied to video and animation in the near future. 
and it doesn't take a leap of imagination to imagine this being a animatable rig where you could keyframe the character, potentially bring in some Mixamo motion capture since Adobe also own Mixamo, as well as animate them yourselves and create a fully animated scene with this style. Looking at how they're doing the generative fill with Project Fast Fill, um, where there doesn't seem to be any flicker, does that mean that potentially animation generated with Firefly 2 run through Project Poseable would also be flicker free, opening up tons of creative options and things like that. So yeah, very, very cool, very exciting, very impressive. Um, and yeah, watch this space as these tools roll out and we get access to them and it's gonna make all these different abilities that we can do in different ways via stable diffusion, but it's pretty confusing and it's not for the faint hearted and Adobe is gonna make it very accessible and no doubt do it really, really well. Um, so yeah, really impressive. I'm going to jump back into playing around with Comfy UI and Stable Diffusion. I'll actually share a fun little preview of what I've been working on in Comfy UI after the AI animation ident. And lastly, if you are interested in videos looking at AI animation tools and workflows, please press subscribe, like, leave a comment, head over to the Discord and register for free as a creative at AIanimation.com. All right, cheers. Have a nice day. Sweet. I've made my first bit of animation using Comfy UI and Stable Diffusion. Another trip down the endless waves of AI tools and learning. Wait, what? Am I typing on a keyboard or writing with a pen?